Guess what guys, today I am catching up with a very old friend of mine. Haven't seen each other for, for a couple of years actually, for like over two years, like since the COVID thing started almost. And, uh, and we've been really good friends for a long time, but my friend is extremely old and only just arrived today. So I've already done the unpacking on the outside. Uh, but I'm going to have to unpack the inside, so let's have a look. Okay, so here we are. Okay, let's have a look. Now this friend is a violin from 1778 from Vienna. It is a Sebastian Dellinger violin, and Sebastian Dellinger was one of the best known violin makers in Vienna at the time that Mozart got there. So this violin was made three years before Mozart actually got to Vienna. And it's, yeah, it, it's amazing. But my client rang me up quite desperately because she lives up north where, they, where it's actually quite humid in summer. And uh, and while she really looks after the instrument and keeps it in air conditioning and things like that, the fingerboard had come off and uh, now it needs re-gluing. So first of all, here is the fingerboard. And here is my old friend. Really, really beautiful violin. And in a way, it's not necessarily a really terrible thing that the fingerboards come off because it will allow me to polish underneath the fingerboard. At the same time, while the instrument is here, I'm actually going to give it a really good service. So I'll get it clean and polish. I'm going to check all the joints, make sure nothing's open and check the bridge, check the adjustment and... Uh, I'm not quite sure about the strings. I may even put on some new strings. So. Okay, so um, just going to check over everything. So it's definitely an open spot here. Good thing is my glue is already on. So I'm, I'm literally going to start gluing straight away. The fingerboard probably needs planing. So I'll just glue the fingerboard on without uh, the nut so I can plane it. So I'm, I'm just going to clean a little bit under here. It's actually not so bad. So I'm just gonna do a quick clean there's a very special cleaner that's my own uh, my own cleaner that I use I think in this case will work perfectly first things first it's afternoon coffee time oh yum this is a really nice Ethiopian bean that I've uh, I've gotten it's just stunning and I drink it as an Aeropress look that one up <laughs> did you know that Beethoven actually played on a Sebastian Dellinger viola in when he was in Cologne. So uh, this this is obviously a violin, uh, 1778. It was the year Australia was settled by the English. It had been settled for about 60,000 years prior to that. Now that's that's looking very nice, and I'm just going to do a tiny polish over the top. Amazingly enough, it's actually really raining here today. We've had a few days of torrential, actually mainly today, but it's sort of got that torrential rain feel about it. At the moment, humidity isn't too bad, but you know, could get worse overnight. There's a lot of rain around. So I've just polished under the fingerboard. That dark area is just going to stay like that. It's quite interesting. I, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. That kind of dark color down there. I actually wonder if that's original. I've, I've seen other Sebastian Dellinger violins that were very dark and, and a much thicker varnish. So, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I will glue up this section here which is under the chin rest and uh, the player probably wouldn't have noticed that very much because the chin rest would have clamped it together. Also I'll glue the fingerboard and I have to admit I did actually clean the fingerboard already so normally I clean it before I glue it but I actually already did that. 
very sneakily it was Olaf from the past who did that. Okay, so first things first, I am going to glue this patch here. Uh, I've got my glue hot, I have the knife ready. And um, I'm just going to put a bit of glue in here. I can't mess around for too long because uh, one thing about this glue is it goes from being great glue to being jelly very quickly. And uh, gluing with jelly just doesn't work. Okay, so that's that glued. And now I've got to move on to the fingerboard. Okay. Let's put the glue on here. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and it literally, um, I'm just going to clean the glue off first, which is kind of important. Uh, and then it's just got to dry. Fantastic. Just going to put it aside to dry and I won't be looking at this until tomorrow. So I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and uh, I'm going to get the clamps off. That's had close to 24 hours to dry. So it's come together really beautifully. Uh, very happy with that. So the next step for me is going to be just giving the whole instrument a good clean and then giving it a polish. So I'm going to give that, uh, uh, the violin a quick clean. So I've got my cloth ready. Uh, I'm basically using water and a very, very, very fine abrasive. It has to be done very, very carefully. So this basically needs to dry overnight now and then I'll get on with the polishing. And uh, hopefully, uh, well, I'm getting close to weekend. So I am I probably won't send the instrument till after the weekend. Uh, but um, just uh, that way the instrument can settle in once it's all set up. So I'll let this dry overnight. Tomorrow I'll do the polishing, then I'll let it dry again. And then I'll put on the strings on the Friday and uh, then I'll let it settle over the weekend get it ready to send like I'll do all the final tweaking and things like that and send it on the Monday uh, and she will be super happy such a beautiful instrument it's just amazing I mean for being uh, 243 years old it's a very nice looking instrument and and the instrument sounds absolutely beautiful you'll see when it's finished okay I'm gonna put it away to dry now yes. so it's another day it's morning uh, the instrument had dried overnight so now I am basically gonna do the polishing so I'm gonna do it dissolve the tiniest bit of varnish on the instrument this instrument has had some cover varnish so it's totally fine to french polish and it'll actually protect it really well anyway being up in the uh, tropics so today is the exciting day where i put the sebastian dellinger violin back together and i'm going to play a little bit and i'm going to tell you about the history because it's just an amazing instrument. Uh, it's amazing um, because it's 243 years old, but it's also amazing when it was made in history and, uh, and the kind of importance of the maker in history. So this violin was made in 1778. That was three years before Mozart came to Vienna. It was made by Sebastian Dellinger, who after Matthias Thier was the best known violin maker in Vienna at the time. So, uh, so the exciting thing is that, um, that the best musicians would have played Sebastian Dellinger's instruments. 
And so this violin was made three years, it, it was made in the Himmelford Gasse, which was, I think, about 600 to 800 meters away from Mozart's house in Vienna. Um, so there's these amazing connections. And Sebastian Dellinger was actually active uh, as a violin ma maker uh, pretty much the entire time Mozart was there. Um, so, you know, there's some violins from the 90s, 1790s. So it's just amazing, that, that kind of connection. Uh, I could just imagine this violin would have only been three years when old when Mozart got there. I could imagine it being played by a fairly prominent player. So it would have been played by a professional player around that time in Vienna. And, and it's quite possible that they that the instrument played in some of the, uh, the premieres of some of Mozart's pieces, maybe Beethoven's pieces. Um, you know, before it made its way here to Australia. So it is just exciting. So my next step here is I've got to just finish the polishing. Then I'm going to just let it dry a little bit more and then I will put the strings on. So apart from the fingerboard falling off the instrument, which can happen in a humid climate, there was just one open join that I glued early on. Now I'm just doing the maintenance kind of polish. I'm going to service like the pegs and, uh, you know, just make sure everything's working beautifully for another couple of years. Can you believe it? Uh, I had such a busy day. It is evening now and I, I still haven't managed to get the strings on this Dellinger violin. So I really wanted to get the strings on today. So I'm going to put them on now. Okay, I've just got the strings on very loosely. I want to put up the sound post. Okay. okay, I've got to get the chin rest on and then I'm going to move across into my shop area to give the instrument a try. Okay, we're all ready. I'm going to take it next door to the shop so I can try it out. The violin's all finished. How amazing would it have been when the player picked up his new violin from Sebastian Dellinger at the Himmelfort Gasse and 1778, 1779, depending on how long he had the instrument there before he sold it. Um, and, you know, like I said, it was three years before Mozart came to Vienna. Three years. Um, so these kinds of instruments by a master like Sebastian Dellinger would have been would have been played by some of the best players in Vienna at the time. And uh, so who knows what premieres this instrument would have been in 240, 230 or, or more years ago. Eventually it made its way to Australia and uh, don't know exactly which path it took. You know, I don't know the full story. I only know the last 50 years of the instrument. Um, but it's an absolutely beautiful violin. Also makes me wonder sometimes about my own instrument. So I recently finished my new violin. And as a violin maker, I, I wonder... Will it be played in 200, 250 years? Who will it be played by? And what kind of story will it tell? What kind of a history of a world will it tell? You know, for us, it's the future. But uh, in 200, 250 years, you know, this instrument too will be uh, close to 200, 250 years old. And... Uh, have its own story to tell. 
So it's amazing. So each instrument that's out there has its own story. So your instrument that you're playing right now has its story because you're part of that story. And the music that you're playing is part of the story of that instrument. Your life is part of the story. And isn't that amazing? So through these beautiful instruments, we express ourselves, we tell our own stories, and the instruments carry those stories with them. We don't always know, but they are part of your story. And just keep making beautiful music, have fun playing. If you like this video, like, subscribe, hit the little bell. Uh, you guys are a great community. I love sharing my information with you guys. Uh, I love your feedback. So keep giving me feedback. Keep letting me know what you're interested in. And thanks so much for watching. And yep, like I said, keep making beautiful music. I'll see you next time. Bye.